I went behind Shane a couple of times and the stones were hitting me, you know, it was real stinging, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to be second in that race, <laughs> would you? <laughs> and I was, I was going around the corner and because the G-string was a bit tight on me, like me... Chafing! Me, uh, <laughs> me, old, me old fella started to fall out the side of the car. Trying to be a bit careful with that. <laughs> An extra opportunity for branding, maybe. <laughs> No, you, you wouldn't fit much on there. <laughs> no, no. Moving swiftly on. You just need a green bike now. So, <laughs> this has got seaweed in it. It's got kaolin in it, which will absorb the, the oil. It's got chamomile in it, which will act as an anti-irritant. <laughs> and it's got... <laughs> do you, do you know they love it, really. Don't believe it. They love all this pampering. And let's hear it for Mark II, Lorem! <laughs> when you've got to wait to hear what the other person thinks and you're going, I'm desperate to see myself. So mm. remind us what you wore when you pitched up this um, morning. Well, I just looked like a glorified mechanic with silver foil all over me, really. <laughs> well, you don't um, anymore. Are you ready? Hopefully not. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Brace yourself. Will be revved up oh, Mark's girlfriend Joe was in the audience at the Star Challenge program, and we're, we managed to grab a few words with her as well. Well, behind every successful man is a successful woman, and we've managed to grab uh, Mark's partner Joe very quickly, as you can probably gather. She's off to back off to work very shortly. But uh, Joe, first of all, tell us how did you meet Mark? Well, it's actually at work. He, he was a patient of mine. Uh, a dental nurse, and uh, there you had him with his mouth wide open, yeah? Yeah, it should have put me off, really. <laughs> but there, that's how we met. And uh, it developed from there, did it? Yeah, he just, I met him in the pub afterwards, and uh, just went from there, really. I mean, did you actually know what he did for a living uh, when you first met? No, I did ask, just to make conversation, really, and he said, I'm a speedway rider, and I didn't know what it was, actually. <laughs> To confess, and I asked him if it was motorbikes or cars. <laughs> so uh, that should have put him off, really. But uh, no, um, I didn't have a clue until I met him. Now I know all about it. <laughs> yes, uh, presumably you'd never seen a speedway meeting in your life before you met Mark. No, it was the bit I flicked through in the newspaper to get to the football, really. <laughs> yeah, because you're a big what? Norwich City fan, is it? Yeah, for all my sins. For all your sins. So. Uh, now you do go to Speedway, and do you enjoy it? Yeah, I do. I, I do enjoy it. I'd rather see the reruns, though, after I know he's OK. Yeah, I mean, how does it feel sitting there in the stands or whatever, or standing on the terraces and uh, seeing them um, fall occasionally? It's awful. It's a horrible feeling, because you just want to run over there, and you, you can't. There's nothing you can do about it. It's horrible, and especially when he lays there for a long time, if he's really hit. But it's something you have to put behind you, and uh, you're right behind his career. Yeah, absolutely. have to be, really. Well, as well as uh, Nori, your family, and Flo, as you call her, uh, also, of course, sponsors have been uh, very important to you. Yeah, always got to be careful at this point because, uh, you know, you start thanking people. There's, uh, there's far too many because it's not just about the people that thank me this year. It's about the people that are going to thank me next year, uh, help me next year. And, um, you know, people that have helped me in the past has been dating back to, like I said, influences on life, like Andy Gelvin's dad, um, Chris. He was a, a great influence to me. Right up through, Ivan Henry used to, you know, sponsor me. There's, there's too many people, and for the risk of not mentioning them, um, you know, it's just, um, it'd be never-ending. And, uh, like I say, there's so many people helped me, like, you know, I mean, Randy Owen has been just unbelievable. He's just helped me the last five years, you know, five years as good as. Just took a back seat and helps me because he enjoys to watch me ride, which people like that are, the, you know, important in life. Every single one of those sponsors much valued. That's right, yeah. Like I say, you can't, you can't just go through them all because um, they are all valued and they know who they are. Um, 
and I've got a brain like a memory like a sieve and I wouldn't start to get my list out and read them out now because like you say at the risk of very important people that have helped me I wouldn't wouldn't like to say it because I missed anyone out because it is appreciated but it can sound um, well like I don't appreciate it but I do so success in all disciplines uh, undertaken grass track long track and speedway and Mark certainly your racing career has enabled you to visit countries that you probably uh, never ever dreamed of visiting. No, that's right. I mean, I've been to Australia several times, or not only to ride, but um, holiday as well. It's good, you know, because everywhere you go, you know, you pick, it, you, you meet friends and places to stay. And you know, Ivan Major's very good to me when I'm in Australia. You know, I always stay with him, and we go out jet skiing together and that. And I normally go over and do long track meetings for him. But um, not only that, I mean, obviously leagues in Sweden and Poland. Again, you meet good friends. I've got good friends in Poland. In uh, Jacek Gajowski is a very good friend of mine who's helped me a lot in my career over there. And um, again, Sweden, we've had a good year this year um, with Billy Hamill's club and Smederna. So uh, another interesting place I visited once was uh, Simon Wig organised for us to ride in Russia, uh, Togliati, which is um, 1,200 miles east of Mo uh, southeast of Moscow, which um, that was a really good experience and again an unusual place to visit and um, I've got Speedway to thank for that. And uh, presumably though as well as all the good points of Speedway racing there are some uh, low points notably uh, injuries and uh, you suffered your fair share of illness as well. Yeah um, that's right you know I've always been a person that's always been quite well um, generally um, you know touch with the injury side of it so far, you know, the usual sort of wrists and collarbones and bits and pieces and torn ligaments, you know, you can put up with, um, you know, you don't tend to think about um, why I don't injuries so much. I'm a great believer that all I can do really um, is ride like as hard as I can, but oh, it sounds funny, but as careful as I can. And, um, you know, you can you can push the boat out too far and, and um, cut the chances down of, um, getting through the season injury free because at the end of the day it's not just about winning races it's about being ever present and it, it's no good doing two months of the season and spending the rest of it off injured you know you've got to you've got to ride for tomorrow now and again that means riding with your head and shutting the throttle off and um you know and, and not going silly and i like to think although i'm a little bit erratic at times you know i don't i do notice that but believe it or not i am in control <laughs> but uh yeah the illness, I mean, obviously, it was a big story this year, and uh, I was very unlucky. I had a, a lovely holiday in Mexico with girlfriend Flo, and um, being a bit of a scatterbrain like I am, I didn't have any injections or anything, and managed to pick up hepatitis in, in Mexico. Um, again, you can only look on the plus side, although I was very ill at the start of the season. Um, you know, it, it, it made me get my head down a bit and, and look after myself and, you know, not, not go out live it quite so large and um, I lost a lot of weight which has got help in the racing so it's learnt me a lot taught me a lot of lessons so you know next year I'm, I'm not going to go out and get terminally ill or anything but I think I'd like to lose a bit of weight for the start of the season you know and um, cut down on the going out and, and be a bit more serious about it really so you can only look on the positive side really all right well before we uh, look to the future what that holds for you let's just talk briefly I know you don't get a lot of spare time, but uh, what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Well, um, I, I've got, like, again, through travelling, I've got a lot of friends, and, you know, Billy Hamill's a, a quite good friend. I've spent a bit of time with in America, and I'm going this next Tuesday to do a, a, a race from Los Angeles to Las Vegas in two days, 500-mile race on, like, motocross-style enduro bikes, which would be good fun, and... Um, another hobby of mine is obviously the motocross, uh, which also does be way a lot of good because it's very good for fitness and technique. Um, um, I see a snowboard over in the corner of the room. Yeah, that's it, yeah. The snowboarding's a, a thing I've done the last three years. Again, through Kelsey Gordon, who makes the suits, NJK um, Kevlar's. He's got an apartment on a ski resort, so I always visit him one or two times a year, you know, to take in you know, a few days snowboarding. It's something I've done now for three or four years. Another. Another one of my hobbies, I, I've got quite a few really, and um, other than that is obviously this place, I'm still working, renovating that, I've been for four or five years now, you know, um, always been interested in the building side, um, of the, you know, the trade, 
And um, I've done a couple of houses up before this one, before I bought this one. And this really was my long-term life project. And um, certainly uh, got a couple more years to go, but I, I should have, you know, broke the back of it um, by the start of next season. So as we near the end of this tape, it's time to look to the future. So far, Mark Speedway has given you a wonderful life and hopefully that will continue in the future and then uh, possibly going into the building trade, yeah? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'll um, go into. You know, I've got a lot of irons in the fire, as you say. But, um, yeah, I'd like to think another three or five years, you know, hopefully at a, a good level. And um, I think I'll carry on riding Speedway as long as people want to watch me ride Speedway. And, uh, you know, as long as I feel... Because I'm not the sort of rider I don't think that could go to a meeting and make the numbers up just to make a living. Um, I think I'll always want to do well or, or at least ride, you know, the way I do it. Because the minute I, I think I stop um, it being a spectacle to look at, I don't think I'll bother riding anymore. So, But afterwards, I don't know, maybe it's something to do with building or probably just something um, to do with using my hands, you know. But it's our future to look forward to and uh, plenty of racing and hopefully success in the uh, World Championship. Yeah, Speedway, Speedway and the people involved with it have been very good to me. And um, like I say, another good three or five years racing. Um, hopefully a lot more good results like this this year. And then um, what life will bring after that, who knows? And well, we hope you've not nodded off, certainly a very long video, but we hope you found it very entertaining as well. And well, who knows, we could be looking at the first Speedway World Champion of the new millennium. Let's hope so. It's goodbye from Rerun Videos.